Revelation 17.5 then says, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And so we'll get to Mystery Babylon in the next chapter, but notice that the Bible calls her the mother of harlots, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And this is because the Roman Catholic Church spawned many other false religions and, um, and churches, and most of them, or if not all of them, being ultimately works-based. Even the many Protestant denominations that spawned off of the Roman Catholic Church continue to have a kind of works-based gospel. It's like Roman Catholic light or Catholic light. You know, you think about the Lutheran Church, the Anglican Church, the Presbyterian Church, the Methodist Church. These are all Protestant churches. They split off of and came out of the Roman Catholic Church, uh, you know, during the Great Reformation. Now, outside of these groups, outside of the Roman Catholic and Protestant paradigm, you also had other outside groups out, you know, outside of that paradigm, like the Anabaptists, who weren't involved in, you know, who weren't, it wasn't just the Protestants and the Roman Catholics. There were other smaller fringe groups out there, uh, early Christian groups. I don't want to call them fringe, but there were smaller groups, you know, like the Anabaptists, who many contend became the Baptists later on because Anna meant to rebaptize or Anna meant to do it again and Anna Baptist meant to rebaptize because they were rebaptizing people that from that had come out of the Roman Catholic Church who had been baptized as babies they were rebaptizing them as adults and so they were called Anna Baptists meaning to rebaptize and then eventually that Anna gets dropped and they become the Baptists and, you know, you had other groups like the Waldensians or many other, you know, groups throughout that time that predated the Protestant Reformation. And in many instances were influential. They influenced the start of that Reformation. And that's why I identify in many ways with the Baptists in addition traditionally to their KJV only position and strict adherence to God's word as the final authority on all matters of faith, doctrine, and conduct, and their you know, doctrines of grace through faith and eternal security. These are ultimately you know, Baptist traditions, and many non-denoms you know, uh, came out of the Baptist tradition as well and took on those doctrines. But you know, just being one of the few also who continue to preach about hell and hellfire and aren't trying to be seeker friendly, you know, but taking a principled stance for the kingdom and for the word of God. So while, you know, the Bible is against denominations, you know, First Corinthians talks about that. I identify with Baptist teaching or Baptist doctrine overall, generally speaking, for these and other reasons. Okay, but the, you know, Roman Catholics gave birth to or spawned the many works-based religions of today. So in this way, it's not just the whore of Babylon or the harlot, but it says she's the mother of harlots because she gave birth to a lot of other false religions other than, you know, just herself. And, you know, try to step into a Lutheran church today. It doesn't look very different than a Roman Catholic church. It's almost identical, the same clothing, you know, many of the same ordinances, um, you know, the way they stand up and just recite and, and all of that. And, and in addition to the works component that they add on to salvation. So one way or another, all of these sects of Christianity bring in works to the pure doctrine of salvation. Whether it's before, during, or after salvation, works are being preached as a requisite for salvation. You know, the Catholics are just simply straightforward about it. You know, they outright say that works are required for salvation, that you have to keep their sacraments and be water baptized and so on and on, you know. Uh, but the Protestants, they're a little bit more, you know, sneaky and subtle about it. Uh, you know, they'll say, well, yeah, it's by faith. It's, it's by grace through faith. But are you really saved if you don't have works? You know, uh, and they bring in works and they say, well, you still have to have works. It's just, you know, that that means you're really saved. 
But again, we get to the judgment seat of Christ that I've taught about before, 1 Corinthians 3, and it says that, you know, when, when Christ is judging the believer's works, there will be some there whose all, all of their works will be burnt away. They'll have no works that remain, but it says, yet they themselves will be saved so as yet by fire. They'll just barely be saved by the seat of their pants. They just make it in by imputation of Christ, by grace through faith, even though they had no works to show for it, you know. So that's 1 Corinthians 3. But the Bible is clear. So, you know, whether works are brought in, you know, through the front door or the back door, they're being brought in. And the Bible is clear that it's by grace. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. I mean, you can't get clearer than that. It's not like a difficult passage or one we could start to debate and say, well, what does it really mean that it's not by works? It's just not by works. That's what it means. You know, it's a gift. And so, you know, the Roman Catholic Church is the mother of harlots, the mother of all false religions, even Islam. And this is kind of difficult to prove, and I'm not sure where I stand on it, but it has been rumored that even Islam was started by the Roman Catholic Church as an extension of Rome in the Middle East. And um, uh, Jack Chick with Chick Tracks, if you, if you know about him, he, he pushes that narrative uh, quite a bit. I'm not sure what to think about it, but it kind of makes sense. I could see that being the case. Uh, Revelation 17, 6, and I saw the woman <laughs> drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So she's drunk with the blood of the saints and no other group in history has killed more Christians than the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, not even Muslims, you know, if you take up you know, uh, the, all the martyrs during the Middle Ages and Dark Ages, it was the Roman Catholic Church that's killed the most Christians. You know, not even Islam, although they're trying to catch up to their mother, the harlot. You know, Islam will play a major role in the end times. There's no doubt of that. We're already seeing, you know, a push for Islam in the world and universities and everywhere. I mean, there's no doubt, you know, I'm not shy about saying or afraid to say that Islam is a satanic religion. They literally worship Satan without knowing it. Uh, but it says that they're drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, right? So that's a great description of the Catholic Church of the Middle Ages and likely the, you know, Roman Catholic Church of the end times with the one world religion who will yoke itself together and already has with the Antichrist.